let's take a look at a fox. Look, there's a fox. Oh man, isn't that cool? So um, gray fox, it's smaller than the coyote, cute as a button. And um, let's just look at its general proportions. So notice that that body is long and that tail is ridiculous. So it has the, the, the gray fox, you know, you start making a tail, then you keep going with more tail, more tail, more tail, more tail. It's hard to put too much tail on your gray fox. The head is proportionately small. Um, and the, uh, also those legs, if you're used to drawing, um, you know, uh, uh, large, large pet dogs, if you're used to drawing a um, wolf or the coyote, you're going to find these legs feel too short. So you're going to have a long body with short legs, very, very long tail, little bitty head, and ridiculous ears. Um, the patterns on the body, it's this really cool grizzled gray, red, and white. And we'll kind of look at those patterns um, uh, in, in a little bit. But let me take, let me just sort of show you how I might go about blocking in this basic shape. Um, let's see if this is working. Yep. So when I'm looking at a critter in the field, one of the first things I do is I look at the negative shape along the back of the body. And I will draw in lightly and loosely on my sketchbook that line on the back. And what I'm going to do is hang the whole body from that. So you start with that line along the back. If it's running, if it's moving, it's in a, if it's in a cool pose, very often the cool pose that it is in will be reflected in that line of the back. So you might want to put this out here. Hold on. <clears throat> from that framework, I'm going to hang the head and the body. So for now, I'm going to be putting in just a ball for the head. And if I'm looking at that from the side, what I do is I put in a ball from the head and a line for where the snout comes out. If I'm looking at that from the front, I put in a ball for the head and a line right down the middle of the face. And if it's turned its head out to the side a little bit, right, um, I'm going to have I'm going to think of that that ball as being a rounded shape with the kind of the 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 moon curve of the midline of the body and then I will extend a little nose line out from that I'm going to hang my body from this line as well so the body you're thinking of this is essentially a hot dog shape in here and here, when you're putting this in, you're just looking at how long is this compared to how deep it is in this axis. So um, if I have you know, my line from my back and I hang my body from it and it feels just too much like a wiener dog, right? then I need to give that more, more body. So if you imagine this as a box, change color here so we can draw that box in. If you imagine that as a box, how does the length of the short side compare to the long side? Here it's about, um, if we take this length here, we put it once, we put it twice, that gives us the approximate proportions for this little critter. When you look at where the legs come in and the shape of the legs, Generally in quadrupeds, what you're seeing in the back is a backwards facing V, the top part of which is thicker than the bottom part. If you've studied mammals with us before, you know what's really going on behind the scenes here is that there is a hip bone right up in here that connects to a knee, that connects to a heel, and then it's the upper part, the instep of its foot comes down like that, and then it's walking on its toes down here. So what you're seeing generally from the back is this, um, this backwards facing 
there's this arrow pointing in this direction. The top part is thicker, the bottom part is thinner. The front legs, on the other hand, come down straight. So um, the I've got a narrowing column here for the front leg. So it's wider at the top than it is at the bottom. And notice that it's not coming from this point right here, where right where the neck comes down. So the neck is going to come down and then in a little bit. So there's a little bit of a shelf before you get to your leg. So um, be sure that this, this little space in there will help kind of place your leg. Another thing you want to do when placing legs is to look at not just the shape of the leg itself, but the shape of the air between the legs. So um, right here, I have what's called the negative shape, right? The negative shape is this shape here between those two legs. And what I uh, am going to do is when, if I hang the back leg first, um, actually probably the best thing to do would be to hang your front leg first. And then once you've got your front leg in, then look at this negative shape behind it and use that to place your back leg in at the appropriate place. So why do I do it in this order? Well, let's say I'm gonna go for a different color of, All right, let's say here is my, my drawing. I've got my box of my body in here and I put in my front leg here, All right? I want that back leg to be the right distance apart. And if I, so I put in my negative shape, that's going to place that back leg really nicely for me. If on the other hand, I did it this way where Let's say here is, here is the back of my critter, and here is my body coming down. And um, I first put in my back leg, and then put in the negative shape to put in the front leg. It's very possible that this distancing in here is going to get all kind of funky. I want just this little bit of a step in here. Um, but if my body was too big like that, and you know, then I, it's easy to get this to be too big. It's a lot because the head and all that other sort of stuff is out here. It's going to be there's a lot more material up here to, that you'd have to then move around. Silence my telephone. You can be quiet now. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, so. Um, because there's so much more stuff up here in the front end of the critter that you would then have to adjust for this, like, oh no, now I need to move my body in here. I need to move my whole head back, all this other sort of stuff. That's a lot of stuff to do. If you had a longer body that was sticking out here, it's easy then, there's not a lot of stuff going on here. You just have, you're just gonna like, oh, now I'm just gonna make the back of my critter here and my tail kind of come out from there. So there's less stuff to fuss with on the back end so that's why I would place my front leg first, then the negative shape, and then place that back leg. Tail is nice and thick, really nice and thick. Um, and so there's just a little bit about a few kind of first steps on how I might block in this lovely little fox. So, Let's give this a try. Um, clear, clear all the drawings. Here is another little fox, slightly different pose. So take a look at the line down the back. And what I'm gonna ask everybody to do is just to make a quick sketch, block in the basic shape that you see here. Yes, Carol? All right, let's try this. So if you've already started drawing, so start a new drawing and uh, block in what you would do for this fox. And again, look at that outrageous tail. If you are out in the field and you count, encounter a gray fox, what you may see is just the tail disappearing into the bush. And the reason is because the 
fox ran into there a minute and a half ago and the tail is still going in. It's kind of like seeing a blue whale. When you see a blue whale, it's like, oh, look, there's the back of a whale. And look, there's still more back of the whale. And then there's more back of the whale. And then there's more of the whale. And then, you know, it, so you just keep seeing whale. With this, in the, the fox ran into the bushes, you're still seeing that tail as it disappears in there. And the neat thing about that is that the tail tip has this great field mark on it. Does it have a black tip or a white tip? If it's got a white tip, you have a red fox. If you have a black tip, you have a gray fox, or you may have a coyote. Um, but coyote is very different body proportions. Um, if it's this low to the ground, hot dog of a critter um, with a black tail tip, then you know you've got your gray fox. So it's neat to have that, that field mark at the very back of the body. Um, so I, that's one of the first places I look like, oh, what kind of critter? Ah, black tail tip. As we're doing this, I'll just say a few things about the color on it. Um, you're going to see patterns of grizzled gray, red, and white, um, and a few little black um, highlights. So there's black around the muzzle, um, and there's black going down the top of the tail and along the tip. Um, the um, the 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 here. If you look at what the gray does, there's this little kind of poop of gray, this little poof of gray that comes along the side, and then it comes down into the leg a little bit, right? That gray was going to wrap around the back of the head and come up in a narrow line on the back of the head, and the rest is this lovely red mane. I'm going to have a um, underneath the throat white that goes down on the belly. There's often a bar, and it may be an incomplete bar, of red that goes across the top, and then that white can continue down further on the, the belly of the fox. You're gonna find different intensities of that red on different individual foxes. And this one is about to jump away. Oh, look, it did. All right. <clears throat> now, this is going to be a one minute sketch. Actually, before we do that, here's what I'd like you to do I would like everybody to do three quick gesture lines just of the line on the back of the head and going down the tail. Just draw that shape in three different places on your paper. Whoop, whoop, and whoop. That's all the time you get for those three gesture lines. Now what I'd like you to do is three negative shapes underneath the legs. What is that shape underneath the legs? So look at that shape underneath the legs. Come up, cross that belly, and down. So start with front leg. So work from right to left, or the front of the animal to the back of the animal. Because we've drawn it, imagine we're drawing, we've already drawn in our front leg, now we're going to get that negative shape behind it. Okay, good one. Yes, please do. Thank you. All right now, let's do a quick gesture sketch of this whole body. So drop that in. We're going to use those negative shapes. The neck of these is, depending on how it's holding its head, can look surprisingly long. Um, so. Sometimes you'll see, um, you might think of this neck as this big cylinder that's curving in like this. Another thing that's fun to look for on um, a gesture sketch. You've now got a, this quick gesture sketch on your piece of paper. Um, what we're going to do is just kind of glance over the whole thing and see if there are any angles that you can tighten up. 
So angles, when I'm looking, thinking about angles, very often I am thinking of, I'm really looking at the negative shapes. So I'm just looking at the shape of the grass around this. And here's, I'll show you just a couple of things that stand out to me as kind of cool things that I want to get. This is a cool angle here. This fur coming in like this and then meeting this fur here. I would pop that in. I would get this angle here coming up the booty and then this little tilt, right? Really the back is going pretty straight and then it comes into a tilt here. So I've got a clear inflection point right in there. So I'll pop that into my drawing. We already have that negative shape underneath the legs. There's a cool one right back here behind the tail. So the tail comes up in a little bit and then back of the leg. So those are just a few angles and sort of negative shape angles that I can look at as I am blocking that in. Now, let's take a look at the sitting pose. So when this fox, again, tail, tail, tail for days. Isn't that a beautiful animal? An absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous animal. Um, so how would you go about drawing this? So first, what I want everybody to do is just make a quick gesture sketch of how you would approach blocking this thing in. We're going to take about a minute to do that. And then I'll show you what I would do. I'm not saying that the way that I would do it is better than your way or the right way to do it or anything like that. But it's just useful often to notice, like, how would you kind of go in and approach this initially? I'll show you kind of an approach that I would take. But let's just sort of notice what, what you would do. All right, let me show you a little bit about how I would handle it. It'll be you know, fun to see if you're kind of taking a similar approach to me, um, or maybe you've got a, a different uh, way of doing it, and that is also good. There's no one way to draw anything. For me, I start the same way as I did on the last one. I look at that negative space behind the head. I've got a line coming down, line coming over, and back here. So boom, boom, boom. <clears throat> on a sitting critter like this, I often think of, well, here's what I do. Um, so here's a ball for the head. And um, I've got the front of my head sticking out here. And I'm going to put in a line for where my snout is, is coming out. And we'll get a close look at the heads in just a moment. We will do a deep dive on heads because they're cool. Um, but for the body here, I'm going to think of this body in three units, three units, the upper body, the trunk, and the hips, right? And so I like, essentially, I take a mammal and I break it into three balls. I've got this ball, I've got this ball, and I've got this ball of the hips. So I'm putting these three balls together. So um, I have up here an upper body ball. I have then, I'm going to put that attached to a mid body ball for the trunk. And then the hips are down here. I'm going to want to think of this kind of three dimensionally. And the kind of the angles across the front here are going to be very helpful. So across the top of where the legs are here, um, here, I'm going to actually sort of extend this ball out here. And I'm going to try to get myself to think of this. I'm now sort of turning it to a little bit more of a cube, right? So here is, here is a, um, I'm going to change colors so you can sort of see the lines that I'm emphasizing in here, All right? So here is okay. 
that front ball, I'm gonna, now I'm going to sort of think of it more of as a box because I'm seeing this at a three quarter view here. I'm seeing the front plane, I'm seeing the bottom plane of it and the side plane of it. That's going to connect into this tube of a body that's kind of coming down here like that. And then the hips sit on top of that. You're seeing the back foot sticking out here and our front feet are gonna come down straight. So the first one as a big column, the back one then uh, tucked in behind that as a big column. If I take a closer look right here at the feet, what's going on is that the leg is coming down. There then is a section of this tube that is coming out towards you. So right here, there's this little section of this foot coming out towards you. And that is attached to a little box. I think I might have to change colors here to make this box, what I'm doing, stand out a little bit more. Um, so that's attached to a little box here. It's a little box of the foot. So you see that little there's, a little, there's an inflection point in here where the leg comes down and then there's a little angle out and then you get the box of the foot in there. Very prominent toes in, uh, sorry, claws in these. Um, gray fox actually have retractable claws like a cat that helps them climb trees. Here's a fox from a slightly different angle. Now, on this one, we're getting really neat white patterns in the front of the body here. Sometimes it's white all the way through the middle of that, or sometimes you get that full red collar that comes all the way across. This one has got a lot of red on that collar across. Notice the front legs coming down as two posts. Let me just do a little bit of drawing on top of this, and I'll show you how I might kind of think about this to um, be able to do it. So let's just sort of think angularly here. Here is the front of its chest, right? That box then comes down here. Here's the side of that box. So there's a little front of the chest box right up here. The neck comes down and it is going to fit into this platform in here along this little circle. So imagine on your little box, a little oval on that, on the top plane of that box, and the neck comes down and inserts into that. The legs are going to come out from the back edge of the bottom of this little shelf here. And remember, we talked about that sort of change. Here's that uh, in the angle right here at the wrist, we have this other, we get this other little cylinder coming down to that little box of the foot. In the back, I'm seeing the other ball. And then that's on top of this other ball of, of its hips sitting there. But getting some angles and planes in this upper chest are going to be very helpful in drawing this little fox. And lastly, the head here. So from the side, the, whoops, come back, little cute. There you are. From the side, 
Um, there's a little bit of a forehead angle that comes down. So from the side, you're going to see a little bit of an angle instead of just a, a, a flat slope. Right. And that angle is where the mass of the skull fits into the box of the rostrum. At the level where the eye comes in, or where the nose comes in, that is where our eye is. There is a cute small nose, and I'm going to just sort of make a little diagram of the nose off here on the side. So what is going on with the nose is there is a lying on its side comma that is in there like that. That's, you can see that right in there. So when you see it from the, the side, it does that. When you see the nose from the front, it'll be the top plane of it. And then the lying from the side comma comes in on one side and on the other and swings back. So the nose, the eye, the base of the ear here are on a line here. The ear is going to then extend further up on top of the head. If I look at this same thing from the front, um, now you're, you're saying to yourself, but wait a minute, the nose and the eye are not on the same line. See, what's going on here in um, it, the, the, where you see the nose relative to, to the eye from the front is going to change depending on the angle that the fox holds its head. So if it takes its head and puts it down lower, you see that nose well below the line, even lower, right? But then as it looks up towards you, nope, wrong way, right? As it looks, the more it looks towards you, the more that nose gets up there in line with those eyes. So there's no formula that you're supposed to memorize. Like you'll see, I've seen some kind of uh, dog drawing tutorials and cat drawing tutorials where they'll say like, you know, put the nose this far down the face below the eyes. No, that's totally gonna depend on the angle that this animal is, is holding its, um, its, its head. So the, the, the features that I want to think of here then, I want to think of this head as, as a circle with a center line. It's very useful to put in the line where the eyes are. All right. Um, and it's also useful to kind of block in what the, the, the plane of the nose is doing. So what I will often think of is, is, is how, much, how much nose, how much nose do I have in here? Oh, thank you, Kevin. All right. All right, so here is the top of my nose. And then I'm going to hang my little muzzle below that. All right, so here's the front of my muzzle. I've got this hanging down and I'm going to sort of hang that below it. If this critter is looking um, is looking further down, right? Let's just block in what those lines are going to be. Then I've got, here is the front of my face, right? I've got this thing looking, looking down. I have more of that top of the nose surface and then smaller little kind of nose piece down in there. 
And lastly, if it's way, way down there, the same thing is going on, but now I've got long nose and a little pad there. So those little features are going to be in different places. Take a close look at the eye on this. You are seeing correctly that is a vertical pupil right in there. So um, the foxes have vertical pupils. When you get up to the size of a coyote, those have round pupils. Um, a lot of the you know cats and dogs that are small and low to the ground have vertical pupils. Um, the cats that are larger and the dogs that are larger have round pupils. So everybody thinks these, of these as cat eyes. Think of these now as um, kind of uh, uh, carnivore low to the ground eyes. What I'm going to do now is show you a three quarter view. And we're gonna take a look at a few three quarter views and then I'm gonna do a draw along with you on the document camera um, and we'll do, we'll kind of block in one of these together. So think about the skull underneath there. Notice that the eye on the side that is close to you, um, you are seeing, you're seeing all of that eye and the edge of the brow on the other side is blocking off a lot of the eye. So on the far side eye, this is, this far side eye ends up being a really big deal for kind of getting a sense of the, the shape of the head on a three quarter view. Um, if we, we have a tendency to do this, right, you know, here's my nose sticking down here. I have a tendency to do two things. One is I will put the two eyes the same distance apart. So if this one I'm seeing right here, I'll put this one right here. But notice from the edge of the nose here, there is actually this big black space that I'm not seeing on the other side. Um, so this eye that's the closest to you is gonna get moved out further here. And also people tend to draw this as a round eye looking forward. All right, but if it's blocked off, because we know the predators, the eyes look more straight out to the front. But if it's a predator, um, even though it's got that eye, if that's being kind of blocked off here, you'll get really different eye shapes on the far side than from the close side. So, Let's, um, I, I'm gonna put in some lines on this fox face and then um, we're gonna to go to the document camera. <clears throat> so how I would think about this, we'll first just do it with me drawing on the screen and then we'll do it with a, a, a real piece of paper. Um, I start off thinking about the, the ball of the head. I then put in a line for where the eyes are. I want to get those eyes aligned. The, thank you for coming. Um, for getting the, that nose in place, I want to get it to the right distance out here. And I want to think of this area out here kind of as a plane going out to that nose. And the nose is going to be right where the, um, the, 
of the nose is going to wrap around from the top surface to the front. So you see this little line in here, where's the, where the, you see a bit of a shadow, right? That is where, so you've got nose that is wrapped around the top. And here's the center line of my nose. I'm gonna have nose that wraps around the side and then the nostril will hook in from this side and you'll see the nostril wrapped in on the other side, but you won't see the line going back on the side, on that far side. So if this is my center line of my nose coming down here, that brings me to the seam between the two lips. So I'm gonna have a little bit of a pooch out on this side and a little bit of a pooch out on the other side. On the chin that is down below that, this is the, the furthest down, this is the middle of my chin. On this side on the right, that is going to come in and up more abruptly. So let me switch colors here because so I can emphasize that a little bit more, All right? That's going to come up more abruptly. Then on the other side, it's going to be out. So this is asymmetrical. So this small side, this big side. When I'm putting in the eyes, the angles right here around the head, right on, where that forehead comes in, you see on this side here, you've got your eye tucking right um, up against that, very little space right here. On the other side, there is a big space. So I want this eye further away from that nose. Your brain is gonna to want to make this all symmetrical. So we have to kind of fight against that. So those are a few kind of key ideas. Let's now um, take a look at see here. Um, I'm going to stop my share and I'm going to get out the document camera and we're going to take a look at sort of drawing a fox head like this in a three-quarter view. Uh, Melinda, do we have uh, Marsha and Bill on the, the call? No, they haven't shown up. Okay. I, I should have uh, double checked with them to make sure they're coming. That's too bad. Um, so let me stop this share. It's me. Um, and now what I'm going to do is jump over to my document camera. And let's see here. All right. Um, I want to draw to draw that cute little fox head. Um, I'm going to walk you through kind of uh, with with real media because when somebody's just drawing on a you know getting to trace over a, a board, it's not quite the same as seeing somebody actually draw something. So um, I would again start this fox head with a circle. And let me see if I can actually zoom down on this a bit more to make this. Melinda, do tell me when I get out of the frame. Yeah, Jack, there's a, um, a, someone is asking whether they could see the picture, but I suspect um, that uh, this is more important for them to just watch your drawing process. Yeah, um, I, um, there is a way to do it on the call that allows all the people watching this live to do it, but then on the recording, people would not be able to see the picture being drawn. Um, so that's why I've now, um, instead of doing the split screen thing, 
um, we're kind of going over to, to, to this view. All right. Um, so I know that that would be, that would be nice, but. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that, that line across the eyes. And I want to then place that nose in. I'm gonna, there's a couple of these kind of cool um, kind of bumps around the eyes where the, 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 the nose comes in. And that line for the middle of the head is going to have my, I'm gonna have my nose coming out this direction. So I'm establishing here this little axis of here is, here's the act, the sort of the edge of this rectangle here. And I'm going to now really be paying attention to lines in this direction, keeping those parallel and other parts in this direction, keeping those sorts of lines parallel. Um, out here off the tip of the nose, the face comes down. And then the nose itself is going to wrap across the back of this. And down the front of the nose. So that's where my nose is going to be. But I've got a place where there is the front of the nose and then here's the top surface of that nose that points up. Little kind of separation between those two little lips below the nose. And I'm going to put in one little cheek sticking out here. And then the other cheek, this one here wraps around the corner. The other cheek is going to be bigger. So I'm just going to have that kind of come off the line and I'm going to stop sort of defining that so that I don't kind of close off the space here because this whole side is going to be facing towards me. We talked before about the chin where the lowest part is going to be here and that side is going to be a different shape than this side. Right, so there's the small side that's wrapping around the other side and then there's the big side of this that is facing towards you. Now I'm going to come back up here and put in some eyes. All right, so I'm going to have this one gets to be right up there against the side of the nose. And this one on the other side, there's this zone in here of dark um, skin and fur. And the eye then sits on the side of that. If this head turned more, this eye on this side would get increasingly cut off by the shape of the, the side of the nose, but I'm not really getting that in this little picture here. It's a small fox, so I'm making my eyes really big. If yours looks, if you have little beady eyes, then it's going to feel like a larger dog, right? So um, by, by giving these, these this big eyes, it's going to turn it into something that's a lot cuter, right? Now, my face fans out from here. So I've got cheek, this cheek coming in here, this other cheek coming in here. Um, from the corner of the eye, I'm going to take little lines back and make a plane that comes down on the side of the face on either side. Now, above the eye, above the eye, I am going to have a, another zone here 
coming to a little sort of a double zone here. Where it kind of pops up like that. <clears throat> now, let's think about more of the forehead of this fox. So if this is my my center line coming up here, um, somewhere up in here is the kind of keeping this parallel here. I'm going to put in a line parallel there. Um, I'm going to go for a big triangle over the face of this fox. And the ears are going to tuck in behind that triangle. So the ears are large and broad. So starting from around in here into here. And um, so my ear is going to come up, has a rounded tip. And on this bottom side of the ear, I'm going to put in, a. it's going to come down. It's not going to be a straight line. It's going to have an extra bump here because there is a fur lined pocket right here. Check out your doggy, check out Spot. And Spot is gonna show you this little fur lined pocket right in here. This front edge of the ear flips back towards you. And then right in here are a bunch of long hairs. Here's what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to take my, this and sort of say like, I have a ear like this with all these long hairs in it. Because the minute I start drawing in all those long hairs, they're white, I get this dark shape in here. And I've lost the idea of these white hairs. I now have dark where I want my light. I want to draw in these light hairs. And the way I'm going to do that is that I am going to say that I have hairs that are going to occupy a bump down here and coming up here. I I'm going to put some shading in on this side. And to make it look like these are hairs coming in, I'm going to have some of the shadow kind of come in like this. So I'm taking some of the shadow edge and pulling it in. So that gives you this idea that this is, there's long hairs here. Now my ear on the other side is turned away from me. So they, they can take their ears and they can point them in different directions. So it's not, these two ears aren't in a symmetrical position. So for this other ear, the base of it is gonna start in the same place. But that base of the ear, it's kind of, I'm going to have it pop up like this, and I'm seeing the back side of the ear. And in the front of it, I'm seeing those white hairs sticking out. So they are sticking out kind of a little bit longer down here. What's going on over there? To make this look very foxy, I want cheeks that point out here. So, so very often cartoon foxes have this very diamond face, right? With their little eyes. You know, here that's uh, that makes it, you know, here's a little fox cartoon, right? Little fox cartoon has these big pointed cheeks that stick out. Um, and my little fox also has cheeks that stick out, not as much as my cartoon fox, but I now want to get make this, it's going to look more foxy 
when the minute it gets these kind of big foxy cheeks. So there's an area of dark fur that comes around on either side. Um, there is white fur that then connects down here. So this fox has Um, so the fox's head is going to be coming in like this into the snout. And I want this snout, this muzzle to kind of come out to meet it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, I'm going to bring the corner of my mouth out like this. My White can kind of come out like that. This whole area is going to be dark and black, except for a little bit of white right at the tip. So this part in here is all dark. And there is a little fox face. For making it look alive instead of like the little orphan Annie Fox that it is right now, uh, with these blank eyes staring back at you, we want to give it a little bit more window to the soul. Um, there's a tendency for people to put in the eyes like this. You know, here's my vertical pupil, and here's my vertical pupil. And you notice there's something now that just looks weird, right? There is. There's, it, there's something that's happened with its gaze, like, like which way are you looking? Um, this eye right back here is a little bit counterintuitive. And to make that eye look right, the, the pupil in it actually wants to be closer, um, closer in, because that pupil is on the back wall. I'm not, I'm actually gonna draw it asymmetrically in that head. And that is a sweet little gray fox. Um, I recommend that people play a lot with heads at three quarter view angles. So the, the, there's, there's the front view, there's the side view, and three quarter view is everything else. Um, <clears throat> this is the view that you're going to see most often because you imagine a, head, a, a fox rotating around, there's only um, one point where you'll see this view uh, in terms of degrees. There's one degree of angle where you'll see this view. There are two degrees where you'll see the side view when it's looking this way and looking that way. And everything else between those is going to be these three quarter views. So um, some people get scared of drawing critters in three quarter views. So what I recommend you do is just don't stress about it, but start making lots of three-quarter view pictures. And what you're going to find is that those get better and better and better. Um, and the more you play with it, the more, uh, the, the easier they're going to come. Um, it's intimidating to do at the start because you know there are these these like the placing the eye gets a little bit weird. There's these kind of counterintuitive things. But remember, just as long as you're making these these boxes, keeping things kind of parallel, kind of start with these sort of cube forms and build out from those, then you can construct these three quarter view images. Jack, can you and, slide the the paper just up a little bit 
the little box that you were making. And I'm not sure if you're going to address this. Some, um, Anne was asking about whether you talk about their whiskers. Oh, sure. Um, so the whiskers, um, don't overdo the whiskers. Um, the whiskers are, um, a, a few whiskers go really, really long way. Um, the whiskers attach in a whisker bed. Um, first, let me put in a few whiskers here. You see, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make a little dot and I'm going to flick out this way. And so I'm just going to put in maybe one or two on the other side, All right? If I get in there and I start to draw in all the whiskers that I see, it becomes this matrix of little crazy lines. And it very quickly gets confusing. Um, a, a few whiskers go a long way. Um, 